What's up folks, welcome to 802 Garage for your dose of endless project cars. And speaking of endless, I wanna to touch on my new upload schedule. I'm gonna to try to upload every other day and hopefully earlier in the day, not midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. So look forward to that. And if by chance you are new here and you're into project cars, especially Japanese project cars, like my JDM Swap 2.5 RS over here has a WRX engine from Japan in it, or my 1997 Mitsubishi Eclipse GSX, please do subscribe because I'll have lots more content coming on these cars. They need a lot of work. Next up, I do want to touch on my merch. It is pretty much ready to go. I got a hold of Teespring and apparently their intellectual property system false flagged me, but I contacted them and within an hour they got back to me and said they would fix it and I should be able to upload my designs within 24 hours. So that was a little over a day ago now, I think, but the merch won't be ready for this video. However, it should be ready to go for the next video and I will obviously let you know. I just want to get all the designs uploaded and make sure it is nice and ready to go. So other than that, it is Vermont. It has been snowing a lot more. I'll show you a quick clip. Snowing more and more. Only maybe an inch or two so far, but I spent a couple hours yesterday shoveling this huge berm that falls off of the roof. You can see it curling over right there. Fun, fun, just Vermont things. But of course, the main feature of this video is my new Subaru Differential. Now, of course, it isn't actually new. It is just totally refurbished. And uh, I'm sad to admit that I probably have 10 plus hours into fixing this differential. And that's part of the reason why I'm not further along with the car is there's basically two days of work in fixing this thing. I spent so much time just literally hammering rust off of it and then hitting it with wire wheels, the angle grinder with the wire cut brush, uh, cleaning it and then painting it so that it doesn't just instantly crumble to rust again. Because honestly, I am worried about the longevity of this differential if I don't paint it is getting a little bit thin in spots. It's definitely weight reduced, but it still weighs a ton because it's still a cast iron hunk. And of course I did had to switch the diff cover as you have probably all seen. And I took it off of this 03 WRX differential, which is essentially the exact same diff, but you will see uh, this one is still pretty rusty, although I flaked a lot of rust off of it. But for example, you can see that there, that could still be flaked off this right there. Uh, you know, that little chunky chunk. So that's all the work that I went through on the other differential. And you will see this is the cover from the other diff and it's literally missing almost this entire bottom section from corrosion and that's where the hole is. So there really just was not much left of the lower portion of this cover. And even the cover I did put on the diff to make it like new again has some slight damage. I'm gonna try not to damage my Mitsubishi in the meantime. <laughs> You can see right there it is missing a little chunk, but that should be fine. And, you know, I can put some RTV in there or something if I need to. But painted the cover, painted the entire body. Looks way, way nicer, and it's going to go really well with all these shiny black parts I have to put on. It's going to really set it off. I can pretend that it's a lightweight aluminum diff, even though it's not. But that, combined with all that, going to be pretty good. There is still a little bit of work I have to do underneath the car. What I do need to do is replace this filler tube, which shouldn't take very long. It's basically just a couple of hose clamps, which look like they're gonna need to be replaced. That's a little bit crusty. I don't even know how I'm gonna get that off. Might have to cut it. And uh, up there, it's even crustier. And then, surprisingly, this frame area really doesn't look that bad, but I do have a captive nut I need to replace. Right there, you can see where that bolt is cut off. So I'm gonna hole saw that out drop it, weld in the new one, and uh, hopefully it will be nice and supportive of that diff. Also gotta clean the rust off there and I probably will paint the areas I won't be able to get to after everything is reinstalled. Probably not gonna bother with anything back there for now. Then once all that's done, obviously I have to rehook up the drive shaft, put the exhaust back on, and I am going to have to remake hangers for that. But uh, then the car should actually be ready to run and drive again. So. Whew, a little bit out of breath crawling under there. I think I'm getting old. Overall, I do think that replacing that captive nut will take me probably two hours to do correctly. 
Just gonna whole saw it out. That should only be a few minutes. Like I said, I might make a quick tutorial video out of it, which could be your next video in a couple days, but who knows exactly. I do actually have some plans tomorrow. Sunday, I'm going to be going to hang out with another YouTuber who's actually from Vermont. Her name is Nicole. She ran the channel and the Instagram Chicane Cars, but now it's Nismo Nicole. So I believe it's at Nismo Nicole on Instagram. I'll put it right up here and in the description and Nismo Nicole on YouTube. And I'm sure she will be uploading more in the future. She's very passionate about motorsports. She has a 370Z and I believe a Miata and I'm gonna help her make some super stud tires, which if you haven't seen those before, it's like tires with big bolts put through the tread so that you can run them on ice and they literally quiet like the old school, huge stud rally cars for the winter. Pretty awesome, I definitely wanna make a set someday. So that'll be pretty cool. Might film some content with her and you'll be seeing that soon as well, but definitely go give her a follow and a sub cause very cool. Somebody for me to hang out with in Vermont who's actually into cars, so that's nice too. But basically, gotta cut out that captive nut with the hole saw, take a few minutes, clean up the back side of what I cut out, probably put some weld through primer on it after I weld the nut back onto the piece. And I'm gonna have to take some quick measurements just to make sure I put it all back in the correct spot, you know, the correct orientation, because drilling it perfectly centered will probably be difficult. And then once I get it up in a position in the car with a magnet, I will weld it through. I'm just gonna use my Harbor Freight Flux Core welder. It should be plenty sufficient to weld that in. And then after I just clean up those little bits of rust and paint them and replace that filler spout, Finally, all this stuff can go in. The only other thing about that that is going to be a pain is a lot of the hardware that I took out of the car is no good. But luckily when I did get that other subframe and all those suspension components, I actually got all of the hardware with it as well. So I've had all that sitting in here, just uh, basically taking a de-rust bath, which I need to add some to, but just so that they'll be easy to clean up when I take them out and put them all back in, but it, it will probably take me a little bit of time just to sort through it all and make sure that I have everything correct. And no, I'm not gonna go crazy and paint all the bolts or anything like that, but I will clean them off quickly and anti-seize them and make sure that everything comes apart easily, which is another reason putting this diff back together took so long. I know it seems crazy that it took me 10 plus hours just to paint a differential, but literally flaking off all that rust, getting into all these nooks and crannies just took forever. And I don't know how well this paint job is gonna hold up. I did use self etching primer, which was definitely the best for this. It is a stop rust paint. And then this is actually just some Volkswagen color matched silver that I had kicking around because the top coat doesn't really matter, but I figured it would look nice and aluminized, covered up the seals obviously. And when I put the cover back on, I did reuse the gasket. So it'll be pretty funny when this Brand new looking differential starts leaking everywhere, but it's fine, everything is fine. Clean these up, clean all the bolts up, use nickel anti-seize because that helps prevent corrosion in the aluminum and of course helps make sure the bolts don't seize. So if I do have to replace that gasket or anything like that, won't be a big deal. Subaru does actually use a metal gasket in the back of this diff here, partially because it blocks off the breather here. So, you know, fluid can't just go spitting out every time you accelerate. And I did put a little super lube silicone lubricant on the gasket because I put that ish on everything as Grandma always says, Frank's red hot, everyone. And that should just help it seal. I really don't think it's gonna leak, but we will see. I did torque everything to spec. It's like 22.5 foot pounds technically for those, I think, and just under 33 foot pounds for these plugs, although I will be taking this one out again to fill it with fluid, obviously. And I do actually have the studs from that WRX diff, which is perfect because I am switching to the WRX, the GD, GG style mount this mustache bar, which requires those studs. So that's awesome. So really I, I should have everything I need to put it back together. And though I won't be working on it tomorrow, Sunday, right after this video, I am gonna be working on that captive nut. And then once I do have this car moving, I hope to do a proper introduction to it and some videos of it actually running and driving and making cool noises. And I know some of you will be pretty excited for that. And then I will be doing an overview video as well of everything that's wrong with this car, which really primarily there are a couple little issues with the way it's running right now, but I don't think it's anything big, but it's the underside that I'll give you a full look at so you can see why this shell is probably not long for this world, although I may try to push it a year or two who knows, we will see. I'm still hoping to import a JDM WRX in the future. Oh, and the other reason this took so long for me to refurb is this bolt just was magically welded in there like crazy by rust. I don't understand it, honestly. I put up Instagram posts about it, but I will show you some quick clips.
but basically every other bolt came out of this diff and the other diff just fine. No problems, just came right out. I didn't even have to use a lot of torque. This one, I just barely hit it. The bolt snapped, so maybe somebody over tightened the hell out of it. I have no idea, but I tried vice grips on it over and over. I heated the hell out of it until the diff was getting purple right here. Cooled it, lubed it, would not come out. Tried vice grips. I was yanking on this thing with the vice grips, hammering it, wouldn't come out. I finally used my left-handed drill bits and drilled through it three sizes until it was almost the exact size of the threads. And I got this thing like perfectly so that there was almost nothing left of the bolt and then put an extractor in it, finally got it out. I mean, it was probably literally one to two hours of work for this one bolt, you know, so annoying. And that's the kind of thing where this process has just been fighting me every step of the way and making it take days longer than I expect it to from having to swap the cover to that bolt to that captive nut, everything like that. And that's the way it is. You all know that. You all know that about my channel and about Vermont. But you know what? I think the results are, are worth it in the end because now I feel good about having done all this. And it doesn't really matter to me if this car doesn't live on because at least now I have something that will work while I do have the car and that I can potentially take off and use on another car if I need to. You know, if I find a really clean automatic shell, well, I'm gonna need this differential to match the ratio in that transmission, for example. And I don't have the money to drop on a six-speed swap, do you? I don't think so. If you do, you can always, you know, PayPal me and then I will put a six-speed swap in my next car. You know what I'm saying? Nah, I'm just kidding. But seriously, if you do want to support me, you can always check out the Patreon or buy merch as soon as it comes out. That's really gonna be it for today, folks. This is just an update video because I wanna get back to work on that captive nut. And because all of this process is going to be shown in my video of redoing the rear end of the car, there's no point in me putting it all into my videos that I put out every other day. I don't know, if you would much prefer that format, you can let me know. I can just do update videos instead of exactly what I've been working on, uh, rather than giving you more of a verbal update and demonstrating and giving you little clips. But really, I think it's gonna serve the channel better if I make long videos that show a more exciting and in-depth process or a more cinematic style video of one big process, you know, lots of progress in a single video, than it will be for the channel if I just kind of give little updates like, oh guys, here's your video today of me spending two hours hammering rust off of a differential and you know another two hours getting a bolt out of the back of it and then uh, cleaning it with a wire cut brush and that's your whole video, you know what I'm saying? So maybe that's more interesting than this talking, but I think it'll be worth it when you get that full video later. At any rate, I'm rambling, but let me know what you think. Of course, I do want the content to be good for you folks because otherwise there's really no point to me doing this. I enjoy it, but I make the videos and take the extra time to film, which also of course increases the amount of time it takes to do something like this because I got to set up all the angles, make sure the lighting is good, etc. But I, I do that so that you can enjoy it and so that so that I get views and watch time, of course, but I also really appreciate your positive comments and your feedback and suggestions. It's, it's really, really helpful. And I hope you all know that anytime you leave a comment with a suggestion and I tell you why I'm not gonna do it that way or if I say why it's not a good idea, I'm always trying to be positive. My tone may not be not, my tone may not be communicated in the comments, but just assume that if I'm replying to you, unless I specifically say something rude or call you out, I'm probably very happy that you left the comment. And I will say, you know, thank you. The reason I'm not going to do that is money, time. I want to do it this way to practice the skill, whatever it is. So don't think that when I reply to you that I'm trying to be sassy or just dismiss you because I really do appreciate it. And I appreciate y'all for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, let me know if you were fooled for even a second that I actually bought a new differential versus just refurbishing this one. But you know, let me know if you think it looks good as well. Obviously it was never gonna be perfect. You know, this differential was so rusty, but feels nicer now, shouldn't rust right away. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a lot better than it was. So let me know what you think folks. Thank you for watching 802 Garage, your home to endless project cars. I'll catch you very soon. Bye-bye, thanks for the SR20, have a wonderful time.